Hello everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to show the versatile and expressive nature of the dab stencil brushes in Painter Essentials 7. To do that I'm going to use my photograph of a, a camellia as a reference image. And the first thing I want to do is make a sketch. So I come up to Effects and then go to Surface Control and Sketch. That will open up a window with sliders that allow me to alter the sketch any way I want. For instance, if I move the sensitivity slider, it changes the look of the sketch. But I had already decided I wanted it about like this. So we'll say OK. And then I will go and save the file. Now, I've already saved this previously, but we'll just save over it so that you see the process. And once it's saved, then we put it aside. Next, I will open up the photograph again. And I'm going to slide it up into this corner a bit. And then I'm coming over to the photo painting panel and I'm going to use the open image uh, as my reference point. And that's this open image is the camellia. So I'll click on that and that creates the uh, reference for me. I want to paint now, but I don't, I'm not going to paint on the canvas. I'm going to add a layer and start painting on layer one. Now I, the, Painter takes you to the photo painting brushes when you switch to uh, photo painting, but I don't want to use those brushes. I'm going to go to the dab stencils and I'm going to use the flow map burst. A dab stencil brush, the way it works is it picks up the texture from the paper or the texture from a flow map and uses it as a stencil to give you an expressive look. So let's go to, to this particular flow map. Uh, map burst brush. If I press very hard, I will get the texture from this flow map called Madness. If I press lightly, not much pressure, I will get ribbed pastel, which is the paper that is selected. Okay, and and as you know, we're we're picking up the reference image here. So what I want to do is just quickly go over the whole painting, and I'm pressing fairly hard because I want to pick up the texture of madness, all those sort of lines that you see there that are being picked up. And once I do that, I'm going to reduce the size of the brush a little bit, say, oh, 45 or so. And then I'm going to paint lightly, much lighter than I was painting before. And what that's going to do is bring in that ribbed pastel, which is a much smoother uh, texture. I'm still getting this uh, and I'm, I'm, you know, picking up the color uh, of the, the reference and the shape uh, it, from the reference. But it's not very realistic because the brush is very expressive. So all I'm looking for now is to find a few edges of the flower and these uh, leaves. And that will give me enough to indicate what this painting is all about. So see, I'm just kind of going lightly over here and looking for these edges of the leaves. And I can look over here at this image to see where things are placed. And I know we've got a bit of leaf here. It's not very realistic. I just want to kind of give an indication. And this looks like it might have been a flower kind of off in the distance. And I like that little bit of color there. And there's a little more color there as well. Okay, so we do that. And we've kind of got the image set. Now I want to come up to the file menu and click on place and go and grab our Japonica sketch or the Camellia sketch and the place command brings that sketch and places it right on top of my image. And so I want to center it over the top of the image. And then if I change the composite method of that layer, this is the Japonica sketch layer. If I change it to gel, then the white of the, um, layer disappears and we see the sketch now. 
Now the sketch is not very strong. It's it's a little bit light for my taste. So if I right click on my um, uh, layers panel over here, I can select duplicate layer. And when I do that, the sketch is much, much darker and I like the way it looks. I'm, I'm thinking there's too much gray out around the area. Uh, and I also want to do a little painting on the image. So I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to take the clone color off from the source image. And I'm going to find a kind of a bright orangey red. Because I like this sort of orangey look that's over here. And I'm just going to take this same brush. Let me go back to the brush tool. And I'm just going to paint a little of this color in a spotty way on uh, the image. And that's just giving a little brightness that it was kind of missing. And I'm going to grab a lighter green and bring that in to the leaf. And I'll put a little bit of that lighter green on this leaf. And this one has sort of a blue-gray on it. So I'm going to come up here and get a kind of a blue-gray. Let's make it a little bit darker. And put that up there. Give it a little bit of color. Okay, now for that uh, area around the outside, I'm going to add another layer. And I'm going to pick a color that's kind of a yellow color and I'm going to take the paint bucket tool and fill. Once I fill then I'm going to change the deposit the composite method to I'm going to use darken and that will give me a, a different kind of look now I've got this sort of yellowy color around the outside of the flower and it I think the color looks pretty nice. The only thing now to do is the, the image is a little bit dark. So what I'm going to do is I've got layer three selected. I'm going to come down to the bottom of the layer stack to layer one and hold my shift key down and select all of the layers. Then I'm going to click on this command and drop the layers. Then I'm going to go to effects, tonal control, equalize. And then I'm going to pull it aside and I'm just going to click auto select, auto set. And what that does is it brightens the image a bit. And I'm going to say, okay, now I can do all of this manually over here. But in this case, I think the uh, auto select works. And there you have a nicely, quickly done, uh, I think, sort of loose, fun image that would be great for like a greeting card or something like that. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Bye-bye.